Welcome back to Understanding Human Anatomy, The Hand, Part 2. In this video, we will discuss the muscles that we find in the hand, specifically the dorsal interosseous muscles, the palmar interosseous muscles, the lumbricals, and adductor pollicis. Now, we have a group of muscles called the interossei, and there's two sets of interosseous muscles, a dorsal set and a palmar set. So I want to draw, since we're looking at the palmar side, I want to draw the dorsal set in first. And as the name suggests, the dorsal interosseus takes origin between bones, inter between osseous bone. And the bones that it takes origin from are the metacarpal bones. So let me draw the first dorsal interosseus in here. And it inserts on the proximal phalanx of the digit. And if we look at this muscle, it's shaped a lot like a leaf. So we'll draw some fibers in here, like so. That's the first dorsal interosseus. And then we have, I'm going to start with the tendon because it's easier to do it that way. The second dorsal interosseus muscle. And the second dorsal interosseous muscle. Inserts on the proximal phalanx of the third digit. The third dorsal interosseous muscle also inserts on the third digit like so. And finally, the fourth dors dorsal interosseus inserts on the proximal phalanx of the fourth digit, like so. Okay. The four dorsal interosseous muscles. Now, The dorsal interosseous muscles act to abduct the digits. Now, 
Remember when we talked about the hypothenar eminence, we have an abductor digit e minimi, and on the thumb side, the first digit, we have abductors of the first digit, abductor pollicis. So we don't need the inner osseous out here. The inner osseous interact with the three digits in the middle, and they do abduct. You can wiggle or move the third digit medially and laterally, and that's why you have the two inner osseous here that they can pull one way or the other. So dorsal inner osseous muscles. Then we have the palmar inner osseous muscles. And the palmar inner osseous muscles are adductors. So we'll draw them in in blue. And they take origin from the metacarpal and then run up to the proximal phalanx. I can color that in to make it a little bit more visible. And then we'll have The second palmar inner osseous muscle and takes origin from the metacarpal and goes up to insert on the proximal phalanx. See if we can color that in. So you can see it. And then the third Palmer inner osseous. And we'll color that in. So in blue, we have the palmar interosseous muscles. And 
looking at them, you might guess their action. The palmar interosseous muscles all adduct the digits. And remember I said that we had a separate adductor for the thumb, the adductor pollicis. So one of the ways you can remember what the muscles are doing is the short word pad, palmar, adducts, and dab, dorsal interosseous abducts. So pad and dab. Now, the third muscle I want to talk about, I want to draw in, is a muscle called the lumbrical. And there are four of them. And the lumbricals take origin from the tendon of flexor digitorum profundus. So, I'm going to draw in the first lumbrical here. And the lumbrical inserts into the proximal phalanx and also into the dorsal extensor expansion. Now that's not going to make a lot of sense to you right now because we haven't talked about the extensor expansion but it will so let's color in the first lumbrical here and these are spindle shaped muscles and as I said there are four of them As I said, there are four of them. And we'll color this one in. I think you're beginning to see why I started with the dorsal muscles because as we keep adding to the diagram they get more and more covered up. And we'll draw in the third lumbrical. And then finally the fourth lumbrical. And again, these muscles are a little bit unusual in that they take origin from the tendon of another muscle. They take origin from the tendon of flexor 
digitorum profundus, and then they insert onto the proximal phalanx and the extensor expansion. So there are four lumbricals, and they're just numbered one, two, three, and four. As everything in the hand, the numbering starts laterally. Now, the lumbrical is an interesting muscle because it both flexes and extends. When you look at the action for the lumbrical, it says it will flex the metacarpal phalangeal joint. Now, if you're looking at the back of your hand, that's the joint where you have your large knuckle. So it flexes the metacarpal phalangeal joint. flexes this joint, but then it extends the interphalangeal joints. It extends the two interphalangeal joints. So this muscle will be active when you are trying to flex at your large knuckle, but keep the rest of the distal parts of the digit extended and straight. So it's an interesting muscle. The last muscle I will talk about in this video is the adductor pollicis. And this is a, a fan-shaped muscle. It actually has two heads. It has a transverse head that takes origin from the second and third metacarpal. So this is transverse head Just put some fibers in there so you can get an idea of what the muscle. Looks like fibers are running transversely. And then the oblique head of the muscle takes origin from down here, particularly the, the capitate and the adjacent carpal bones and comes up like so. And we'll color this head in.
And again, I'll put some fibers in. give you a rough idea of the direction of the fibers and this is the adductor pollicis adductor pollicis and its action of course is to adduct the first digit to adduct the thumb that will conclude our discussion of these muscles in the central part of the hand in the next video we will talk about the muscles of the thenar eminence and the hypothenar eminence. Thank you for your attention.